What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with another edition of, actually the first edition of, the Play in Tournament 2024. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell goes a long way for me on this video, goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. Have to always be careful with that from last year, year before. The whole idea is that uh, the Play in Tournament is not technically the playoffs, but it is really, really fun. For those who are not familiar, one through six in each, we have the playoffs set. We have the, the seating set for one through six, but seven, eight, nine, ten, you have the play in tournament here. Two games that go down on Tuesday, two games that go down Wednesday. You're going to want to take advantage of taking advantage of some news that shows up here because I think the prop markets can be very soft based on a couple of things that we're going to talk about potential minutes that are going to be out of control. We could see 48 minutes for the likes of like Sabonis Fox. Doubt we see any like 48 minute guys for tomorrow, but we'll take a look. We'll talk through the ins and outs of it. But if you're new to the formats of how I do the playoffs or the play in tournament, in this case, I go lean like lock. So I'm going to give you a lean like lock from every single game. Now a lock, not going to be the standard one unit or more that it is during the regular season, but it is truly just my favorite play from the game. So a lean, something I'm thinking about betting that I haven't yet. A like, I'll have a very small play on it, or I'll tell you exactly how much I have on it. And then a lock. Those are going to be a half unit or a unit or more. I do have a one unit lock that exists on this card. I will call it out here as we talk through it. But we got two games coming down the pipeline here on Tuesday, two on Wednesday. I'm going to be bringing you a video for both. It is going to be good times. We'll talk BetMGM at the midway point here as well. But producer Jacob, hi, hello. Let's get to the picks. It's playoff time. It's play in time, baby. Respectfully. Let's get to the picks. Perhaps the weirdest thing, the weirdest thing about breaking down this tournament exists for this game right here. The Los Angeles Lakers, the New Orleans Pelicans, the Pelicans, the seven seed, the Lakers, the eight seed. They get two cracks at making it to the playoffs. I repeat, both of these teams get two cracks. If one team loses this one, well, a team is going to lose this one, but whomever loses will then play the winner of Golden State and Sacramento in order to then play the number one seed, Oklahoma City Thunder. Otherwise, if you win this game, your lovely reward, playing the two seed defending champion, Denver Nuggets. Now here is the thing, friends. I love Oklahoma City. We've talked about how much fun they are as a basketball team, but there is one unequivocal, just math-based fact, and it is called age. The starting five for the Oklahoma City Thunder averages averages less than 24 years of age the youngest team to ever get the one seed in the modern basketball era wild wild accomplishment for the young sga chet holmgren in his first official year here in the nba unbelievable stuff from jalen williams the supporting bench love it you are an insane person if you would rather play denver as a winner of this game than playing Oklahoma City, which just adds a whole layer to this game that I can't even describe to you. We have a 39-year-old LeBron James at the tail end of his career who has had mileage like crazy on non-successful NBA Finals attempts. Now, obviously, some successful ones along the way. You know, people want to call it the Mickey Mouse title. How, you mean in the middle of adversity, you won an NBA championship in 2020? Seems like a pretty good deal to me. But also, the title in Cleveland was unbelievable. The titles in Miami, unbelievable. LeBron James, top two basketball player, three basketball player of all time, no matter how you want to slice it. We can have the Jordan talk. I know some people want to have the Kobe talk. I don't even get that one still. But Bill Russell talk. Depends. Every every arrow is different. It's so hard to compare. The modern athlete, just overall going to be a better athlete. I, I think you're leaning the LeBron way of that. But either way, what I'm getting at is who is going to do their best to lose this basketball game because you are an absolute insane person if you're the Lakers. And you win this game, obviously, then you're in the playoffs. And you got to beat everybody eventually. Anybody who keeps winning, you win eventually. But you know that Jokic and Jamal Murray are healthy right now. And you get multiple series to go down the line until you would have to face them. Because you wouldn't have to face them until a potential repeat in the Western Conference Finals. Oh, that's so wild to me, isn't it? And that, friends, is where I think the Lakers have a little bit more incentive to make sure 
that they somehow finagle their way out of this one. Maybe not play Anthony Davis 45 minutes. Maybe limit him considering he just hurt his back. Maybe somebody was doing some math out there crunching in the back and said, you know what, maybe this is our way to limit Anthony Davis if we decide to. But at the end of the day, I'm somebody who's competitive. I wouldn't ever want a team to intentionally go out and try to lose a basketball game to duck an opponent. But it's on the table, and I would think you're an insane person to want to play Oklahoma City more, or say, play Oklahoma City less than you would want to play Denver. Like, you wouldn't want to play Denver in any scenario. Good talk. Glad we had it. Let's break down the actual basketball here and the actual bets. As such, I do think the Lakers have more outs to be able to, like, limit minutes. I think Ingram is kind of a question mark. They did say that they could ramp up his minutes for this game. I'll see it. I'll believe it when I see it, if you will. Now, a 224 and a half total. We just saw these two teams play at the very end of the regular season here. New Orleans got absolutely waxed by the Lakers here. And as such, well, we're here. Both teams get two cracks at making it here to the playoffs. And as such, I do think the New Orleans Pelicans money line is kind of a fascinating one. One, I do think that they are healthier, that they're better off than they've been in a long time. Just getting Brandon Ingram back in any capacity is a gigantic ad for them. But also, it's a young team that, you know, if you have to play Denver right from the get-go, you have to play Denver. Nobody expects anything of New Orleans in a lot of ways. I think that they are a very slept-on team with amazing wings in Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, uh, that kind of do different things. One's offensively laden, one's defensive, a uh, stalwart, if you will. Probably shouldn't even leave the court, if we're being honest, for this basketball game. But I'm going to call it a lean on the Pelicans' money line, and I'm going to call it a lean on Brandon Ingram under 18.5 points. And some might say 18.5 Eric, that's really, really low here for Brandon Ingram. By the way, Michael Bush just goes yard. I just talked about him in baseball, but it is what it is. Anywho, Brandon Ingram, friends, 18 and a half points. I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna just jack up his minutes from 24 where it was at here last time out to 32 right from the get-go. Now, maybe, maybe this is a spot where they give him a trial run. Maybe there's an opportunity for Brandon Ingram to just say, you know what? We're not gonna go anywhere unless he's playing well, but 21, 23-ish minutes there last time out. I'd be shocked if he got 32, 34 here. He averages 20.8 points per game. They've been going to point Zion. He hasn't been a part of this rotation now for a long damn time. In fact, he had been out for a month, like a almost full month since March 21st there. First game back against the Lakers there, 23 minutes. There you go. But I'm not going to bet that one in here is why. Because I think instead of taking the under of 18 and a half where you just get unexpectedly bit by... The opportunity that Brandon Ingram does play 30 plus minutes is I think you can get a small play in on my guy, Herb Jones, who I think is vaulted into a different kind of role here. Now, they do have Najee Marshall, who can be a defensive stalwart if things aren't going well for Herb Jones offensively. If he's not making a corner three or two, they do have a tendency to go out and limit his minutes. But if you're going out and playing this game straight up, which I do some of this is facetious. Like I'm being a little bit hypothetical talking about this game, but I do think Herb Jones is just so important to the defensive makeup of this team. If you want to go small, you could even go points or not points on. You could go Zion at the five in certain scenarios. I think Larry Nance guarding Anthony Davis makes way more sense. 6'9, 230. I mean, Valanciunas has the body, but he's just one of the worst defenders in the entire NBA. But I think Herb Jones ends up on the floor a lot. Now, he only has a 14.2% usage this season, but kind of is counterintuitive to the Ingram play. We're under 18 and a half here. Herb Jones could just be absolving, you know, Brandon Ingram extra minutes, if you will, at times. Now, Herb Jones over the course of this season, not averaging like the craziest of minutes a lot. And you're looking at like 30 and change that he had. But he had been routinely playing 38, 38, 32 in these recent games that were all must win type games. Very important games for New Orleans to get out of that back playing game where you get two cracks at it here. So Herb Jones, somebody that averages 11 points per game, obviously will take a down tick with Mr. Brandon Ingram back, but I still expect a lot of minutes because of his defensive presence. As for your lock friends, this shouldn't come as a whole big surprise to a lot of you. He's treated us well. In fact, two for two on locks with Trey Murphy this year. 15 and a half points is what we locked him at the number last time around the corner. As I look at my sheet, he went 
infinitely, infinitely over against Golden State, put up 24. Actually, no, it was against Sacramento, 27 points that he had in that outing for us. So either one of those, he better catch the ball. So I just could have bet him both times. That would have been good. But we're going to freaking bet him here. He averages 14.8, averages 29 and a half minutes. Brandon Ingram does directly affect him. But again, if I think the numbers are down there, he's only at 11 and a half minutes against a backcourt and he uh, just wings here from the Lakers. They play absolutely no defense. This is going to be an awesome opportunity for Trey Murphy to come in and knock down some shots. And if you take a little bit off of like the 20 and a half, 22 and a half here, and you put it down here where it was 13 and a half, 15 and a half, 11 and a half points, friends, he's going to find a way on the floor here in a lot of these spots. I think he's going to have a pretty green light. That's what he's out there to do. So Trey Murphy can we make it three for three? That would be fun. Over 11 and a half points. My favorite play from this one. Let's check out BetMGM, shall we? First bet safety net up to $1,500. Friends, if you're looking for some extra exposure here and you have DraftKings, you have FanDuel, fire up BetMGM here for the NBA play-in tournament for the playoffs themselves. Great opportunity to make yourself a little bit of money, honey. Great opportunity right now. Again, first bet safety net up to $1,500. You get to have your first bet no matter how small you want it to be 20 bucks 50 bucks 100 bucks up to 1500 dollars. if you wager there you're getting it back in bonus bets if it loses take advantage of these opportunities when you get promotions from sports books to have these incredible bonus bets and obviously you'll get the bonus bets back in the event that that first bet loses it's only if you're 21 and over if you have a gambling problem please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER to game number two here you go to the 9-10 game we go. Golden State Sacramento playing in the nightcap here in Sacktown. Running back game seven that we had. Pretty entertaining playoff series until Darren Fox hurt his hand. and it was a whole thing. You saw Steph Curry go absolutely ballistic on him. But we're excited to see this rematch. Two teams, there's no love lost between them. That makes it enjoyable. But you got a Golden State team that gets healthier and healthier. And you have no Malik Monk confirmed for this play in game. So you win, you get an opportunity to play the winner of New Orleans, Los Angeles. And then again, big incentive to win both the games here because you could run into Oklahoma City. I guarantee you, Golden State or LA, not teams that Oklahoma City wants to see in that first round. Might it be uh, firing up against them? In fact, more like Oklahoma City. I trust them during a regular season. I trust them when you're playing the Washington Wizards. Playing 44 minutes a night against LeBron and Anthony Davis or... Steph Curry and Draymond Green and Klay Thompson, even though they don't have to play them that many minutes. And let's talk through a little bit of why here, friends. But I think this spread is pretty darn efficient. Although if you made me, if you absolutely made me pick a side here, I would be going towards the Golden State side. I think they are the correct side to be on. But the money line, again, as it sits where it's at, not going to touch it. And the spread, two and a half, I think it's just outside the realm of playable. I've thought about it multiple times, but I have a game, uh, the Chicago Bulls tomorrow, minus three. They're your lock tomorrow. Um, I will definitely be betting and firing that one up a little bit more than I have any interest in a game on this front end. So happy to take that exposure and go a little bit later here. But let's talk through a, loyal, a little bit of this rotational uh, situation that we have, if you will. I do think Golden State and Sacramento going to play pretty darn tight rotations. I see like seven and a half guys playing for Sacramento. I wouldn't be shocked to see Sabonis and Fox play the entire game. I, I wouldn't. I'm going to project them for 42 minutes, but I wouldn't be shocked to see them play the entire basketball game. As for the other pieces, Keon Ellis, defensively, really good. Nearly a 95th percentile defender in the NBA. He is going to be getting a lovely assignment trying to run around and guard Steph Curry and or Clay Thompson. That should be entertaining to watch. And then Keegan Murray, Harrison Barnes. This is where I just try to figure out how many minutes would they actually want to carve out for Davion Mitchell, Trey Lyles. Not that many. I have 18 right now for Davion Mitchell, 14 for Trey Lyles. And even that's a little surprising. I do think Harrison Barnes is the one guy, if he's not knocking down shots, if it's not going well early, they could try to get Trey Lyles out there to knock down some shots pretty decent three-point shooter at times in his career but Trey Lyles yeah it's going to be a pretty dicey situation to go project those minutes so thought about taking some overs there but I will say I think just an over of the entire basketball game here 223 and a half this dropped quite a bit from open and I'm a little bit surprised 
considering the health of Golden State. Steph Curry back in, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green, Jonathan Kamingo, Chris Paul, Trace Jackson Davis, Brandon Pajemski, Moses Moody if need be. They have options to mix and match. It is going to be a lot harder to pin down what those rotations are, but I can guarantee you one thing. They are going to be out there, guns blazing, whomever is out there. If Mo Moody's out there, he's down there to knock down quarter threes. If it's Pajemski, he's there to rebound, play tough D, and be at the 10. You've got Jonathan Kaminga coming off the bench now uh, instead of Trace Jackson Davis. I will at least say there's some ways I think Kaminga plays a little bit more than Trace Jackson Davis here, and I think that'll lead us to our lock. But first, the over friends, the over of 223 and a half. I think is a really good opportunity in this one. So very small play for me here. Going to keep it entertaining. But this is the play from this one. I like the Trey Murphy over 11 and a half points. I have a little bit more on that one in the uh, earlier game. But I think Trace Jackson Davis is a little bit over projected by the books here at 17 and a half PRA as the rookie from Indy. He's played pretty darn good this season, had moments. But I don't trust Golden State to want to have him out there if things don't go well against Sabonis right from the get-go. Now, Draymond Green, defensively, with with Murray and Barnes, considering there's no Malik Monk coming in off the bench, I think there's just no need necessarily to have to have Trace Jackson Davis out there if Jonathan Kaminga is the offensive spark plug that you want there. Matches up pretty well with Murray and Barnes. I think it's an opportunity to have his offense on the floor here. And I think Trace Jackson Davis, his range of outcomes for minutes is pretty darn wide. But I think the downside far outweighs the upside here. And so I'm taking the entire portfolio of him. I only have him in for 19 minutes at the moment. I'm looking a lot of places, a lot of projection sites that I trust in that have him around 23, 24. And I know why they're doing that, but I wouldn't be shocked, friends, whatsoever, whatsoever, if we saw a surprise Draymond Green, Jonathan Kaminga starting lineup, something that they had gone to earlier in the season. I know Jackson Davis played himself into this rotation more so during the regular season, but averaging eight, five, and one, averaging just 16 and a half minutes on the season, playing right around low 20s minutes here to finish out the year. I don't think in this spot, I would be shocked to see Draymond Green on Sabonis for a lot of these, depending how this game script goes. So give me the under of 17 and a half PRA for a half unit play, Feel good about that one too as well, but uh, definitely like the Trey Murphy one more if you're trying to scale out my plays. Again, that's why this exists. Let's get out of here. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks in the NBA streets. But again, first one of the play-in tournament. Uh, Producer Jacob, thank you. Fantastic stuff. Let me know down in the comment section who you think wins these games. Again, I don't have a play on either of those spreads or money lines, so I'm happy to hear it. All I know is, damn you, if you're going to bet Atlanta against me tomorrow, because Chicago, that is the play that I'm really, really here for. Giving you a little sneak peek, but you're going to want to tune in because I've got another, well, I've got two other plays from tomorrow that I've already fired up. Lines haven't changed all that much yet, which again, I'm trying to get ahead of the lines, but I'm going to let premium Discord know first. You can sign up for that down uh, at Odd Chopper in the link below. Great stuff. I'm excited for this playing tournament. Really excited to get the NBA playoffs underway, that's for sure, as is producer Jacob as a Celtics fan. Things look good for you, friends. Minus 190 to win the Eastern Conference. Come on. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Tuesday.